Hi everybody, let's talk about the new artboard features in Adobe Illustrator 2026. I'm Laura Coyle, I teach here on YouTube and in my online Illustrator learning community. To learn more about how I can help you learn Illustrator, check out my website at lauracoylecreative.com. All right, let's dive in. First up, we have artboard naming that's directly on the canvas. And the nice thing about this is you can just hover over the name, double click on it and change it right here rather than having to go into artboard editing mode. Now, if you don't like having the name on the artboard, then just go into preferences. That's command or control K and it's here in selection and anchor display. If we go down to the bottom, there's artboard display and you can just uncheck this to turn it off and I'll click OK. And then let's go back to preferences, command or control K once again. And you know, it's getting hard to remember where all of these preferences are. So we now have this nice search box here. So if you type in artboard, you will find show artboard name on canvas. Just click on that. It takes you right to where it is and highlights it. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that back on and then click OK. Next up, we have artboard color. So if you see when I try to select the background of these two artboards here, it's actually a background color for the artboard. So let me go over to the properties panel and where we see edit artboards here, you can see the selected artboard has a little color chip next to it. So let's go ahead and add another artboard since we're in artboard mode now. And then you just come over to that color chip, double click on it, and then pick something from the color picker. And notice right now we don't have access to our color swatches. They're grayed out, but hopefully that will be added in the future. I'm going to go ahead and undo just to get rid of that extra artboard and come back over here. And let's look at another improvement that makes working with artboards a little bit easier. So first I'm going to go over to the artboard tool and click on it so that we're in artboard editing mode. And we now have a contextual menu. So you can right click here and just get a menu of options of things that you can do. So you can duplicate the artboard, you can rename it, create a new artboard, all of those things. Generative expand is here and also export. So for this, I'm going to go ahead and let's let go here and I'll hold down on the shift key, just like you do when you're selecting multiple objects. And I'll use that to select the second artboard along with the first there. And now I have my two artboards selected. So I'm going to go back and find that export command by right clicking. And then as I do this, it's going to open up the export for screens dialog box. And it's got just those two artboards checked, which is great. But this also gives me a chance to show you something um, about that artboard background color. So I've got a couple of formats here, PNG and JPEG. So I'm going to go ahead and export these artboards. And I just want to show you that if you're using that artboard background color, it doesn't show on the PNG export, but you will see it on a JPEG export. So this is a very new feature. We're in version 30.0 now. So expect that in later versions, your PNG exports will let you include the background color of the artboard, just like JPEGs do now. All right, now let's go back to Illustrator and let's close the properties panel. And I want to show you something that's new in the artboards panel. And what we have here is a new column here. So we can just come through and start locking and unlocking artboards. That's really great. So now, um, I'll switch to my selection tool to get out of artboard editing mode. And then you can see everything is locked here on these two artboards and then the rest of the artboards in my file as well. I'm going to go ahead and just unlock these and leave my bunt cakes one locked. And I had somebody in my community asked a question about this. How does this show up in the layers panel, which I love, uh, that question. Cause it, it got me to look in here and see that actually, yes, these are a couple of locks that are put on the objects that are on the bunt cakes layer. So that's how it shows up in the layers panel. And then of course, also in the artboards panel. 
And if you go back into Arcboard editing mode, you can do that right click again to get the contextual menu. And there's a little unlock command here where we can unlock all the Arcboards or just one of the ones that's locked. And we can come down here and even lock the selected Arcboard. All right, I'll let go on that and I'll exit Arcboard editing mode. And now I have one more Arcboard feature I wanna show you and that is snapping. So Adobe has added a lot of snapping improvements to Adobe Illustrator. And what we're seeing right now is a typical thing when you have something that you want to align on one artboard, you can see that it's snapping to everything on the artboard over here. And it's just giving you a lot of extra noise that you don't want. So even though everything's locked, we can still see it with our smart guides. So now I'm going to go back to preferences. That's command or control K. And then let's go to the Smart Guides preferences here. And now we have an option to limit snapping. So by default, it snaps within the entire canvas. So everything is potentially something that can be aligned to. But here we can limit that to the active artboard. So I'll go ahead and click OK. And now I can take this cherry and move it around. And you can see nothing is interacting with the artboard over there with the button cake. So that's great. Now, a shorter way to get to this is, is to go up to the upper right corner here of the window. If you've got your control bar, you can go to the snapping quick access panel. And then we've got buttons here. You can toggle things off and on. And then we also have uh, smart guides that you can turn off and on here. And then here are the preferences. So if we click on this button, it takes us directly to the smart guides area here so we can limit snapping. And this is helpful. You may have to go back and forth doing this because it's great to turn it on for the active artboard. But once you do this, then you're only snapping to that active artboard. So if you've got things outside the canvas, you're trying to snap them to each other, it's not going to work. So you're going to need to kind of come back and forth here to adjust these settings. And those are the new improvements to artboards. We've got name on canvas, artboard color, a new contextual menu inside of artboard editing mode. We can lock artboards and we can limit snapping to artboards. All right. So I have just one more tip and this one is for astute graphics users, totally different subject. It's not about artboards, but I was working on this artwork and this plugin came in very handy. So this is a plugin subscription that just does a lot of things that Illustrator natively doesn't do. And here's this one right here. So if you've ever uh, had a path like this that you drew with the blob brush, you can see it's expanded, it's outlined like that. These other paths are all strokes, so I can uh, raise and lower the stroke weight. But this one, I want it to be thicker, but because it's already expanded, I can't do that. So this is where this tool comes in. It's reform, and I'll just click on the panel there to open it, and then click here to select the reform tool. And you can see how many anchor points are on that path there. That's a lot to edit. Um, so what this does is you just hover over your, your path, and then you just pull, like drag out there, and you can you get this red line that you can use to just reshape the path. And in this case, I don't want it to be you know of different widths here. So I'm gonna go ahead and reset, and instead I'll hold on the Option or Alt key and then hover and drag, and now it's just going all the way around. So I can make it a little bit thicker like this, and you have this preview that lets you know the size of it, and then once you're done, you click apply and it does it for you. It removes the anchor points that are superfluous and it's really good. Okay, and that was a pretty simple example. Here's another one uh, where you can just use it at a different width. So, you know, the other one you could probably do with an offset path. This one would be harder to do if you wanted to, you know, do an uneven reshaping here. So I'm taking this highlight at the bottom of the glass and I'm just kind of, you know, trying to find a good place for these points here. And then I can shape them like that. And when I'm done, click apply. And you see how much faster it was just to do that little reshaping there. So that's called Reform by Astute Graphics. All right, so that was your bonus tip. Well, I hope you enjoyed those tips. If you'd like more, join my email list. The link is in the description for this video. And thank you for watching.